All right, hello and welcome everybody who's watching to Aurora All Stars, the 2953 Microtech Grand Prix. So we're going to be seeing some awesome racing today. We've got uh, 18 racers; they're all set up in Auroras, um, and we're going to be going through uh, three tracks. So first up, set at Port Tressler, is the Tressler Twist. So this is a new new track. It's a zero G twisty one through here. And then after that, we're going to go to the icebreaker. And after that, we are going to go to the snake pit for the finals. Uh, looks like race direction has the racers all lined up. So just to catch you up on what's happened so far, uh, all the racers qualified on the icebreaker just now, putting down some of their putting down some of their best times. Uh, and so we ended up with uh, Shacknew in pole position with the time of. Let's see, Shacknew had. Uh, 146.52 is his fastest Aurora lap in the Aurora, which is blazing fast. Uh, followed by Dude 3D at 148.51 and close behind at uh, Kyrexia at 148.91. So some very fast times from the folks here in the front. Uh, and we are I guess, about ready to get rolling. So this first sprint is going to be six laps around this course. Uh, and the winner is going to take home eight points towards the championship. And then we're going to follow that up with a 12 lap race. Uh, and the winner of that is going to get 25 points. Um, so yeah, uh, speed and I've got a Speedweed and Kayla Star here that are also going to help uh, be filming and commentating. So yeah, Speedweed, do you have anything to to add before we get started? No, not really. It looks like uh, we have a good number of racers here. About counting 13 racers, am I right? I think it's uh, 18. We should have 18 racers. All uh, right, and then we've got uh, three racers back there in the overflow. So there, fo there were two rounds of qualifying, and for folks that um, put down at least one time in both, in the top 20 spots there in the grid, and then the other folks, uh, if they DNF'd are in overflow. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get this rolling. So to walk folks through the track, if they're not familiar with it, uh, first the racers are going to head through that start-finish gate down below. They're going to go all the way up to the top of the station passing between those sort of, you could call them giant tuning forks, uh, and then they're going to twist around, so it's called the Trestler Twist, uh, below one of the hanger arms, above the other, down through the cargo chute, and back through the start finish. So it's a very, very tight, twisty track. Right now I see 15 racers in front of me. 15? Off the start line, yep. Oh, and then three more in overflow. So they're, they're a couple kilometers back. All right. Check in with race direction, and I think we are uh, we are ready yep, to roll. We are ready. Hello, everybody on stream. Uh, we are launching in 60 seconds. Keep your eyes peeled. Thank you. Let's hit it. I've got Speedweed here with a shot of the start. We've got a POV from one of our racers, Shacknew. So we're going to be able to ride along for parts of this. Shacknew in pole position. And then uh, HD Mac had our other official providing an overhead of the entire track. I think what we're going to be looking for is uh, if the race racers that are going to keep it tight going all the way up through the top because this is going to be a uh, it's a very long turn where it's very easy to overspeed especially in the world right there's the boops and they're off oh we had an early start all right it's like shock new kept it tightest we've got Dude 3D following, Shaq New heading down from the tower into the keyhole. We got Dude 3D overtaking Shaq if I see. Oh no, he like overshot. Collision between like Kyrexi and Tent. Shaq New coming down in the twist. And Shaq New finishing that first lap. Looks like, so Shaknu already pitching down 
ahead of that start. So he's already got his mains engaged to then flip around. But looks like Connor, Connor with the overtake, potentially. It's hard to tell in zero G, but it looks like Connor did just overtake Shock New. Heading down. Oh my God. And Shock is taking back lead. We have Jekyll in DNF. Here we got Shaq New coming through the start finish. Oh, oh. Shaq New ate it. Do 3D ate it as well. Two of the top racers out. And I think we have Connor back in lead. Looks like Connor's very easily. Connor's got quite a lead. Coming through. Yeah, all right, Speedy. Yeah, your primary camera. We've got Connor over halfway done with the race. We've got Connor onto lap four. The total time of 2.70. Yeah, I think Connor's doing great for this one. And see, so we have a couple. Looks like Connor is going to have to lap a back marker, so lap Ricky Ticky coming through the tower. Connor takes it much Success. tighter through there. Heading down to the keyhole. That was a very difficult turn to nail. You're sort of doing a 3D turn, twisting down through the cargo containers. And it looks like we've got Connor pulling up there. Looks like starting lap five. Oh no, Connor collided. Oh. Some last one updates. So it looks like we've got looks like Amstel in the lead. And it looks like a finish for second saber. Second saber seems to be the first. Let's get an iron arm zoom. Will if he's second place correct? I believe so, and it looks like. Oh no, I'm still. Blew straight into the rings. Very clear, this is the end of sprint number one. All right, and I think. Checking the results, yeah, it looks like second saber with six laps. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a win for second saber, followed closely by Ampzul.
and then Russ Collins. Um, Steve, M A K Z U, blew up, you know, oh, in the last round. He was already done, Steve. He he was already done. Okay, yeah. I see. Okay. He blew up after that last lap. racing everybody this was this was a tough one it's a difficult track with a lot of racers and the the aurora really doesn't have the same kind of uh the aurora does not have the same kind of thrusters as something like a fury p72 has so you need to be very precise when you're maneuvering it uh in zero g because it's very easy to overspeed and um you know with a lot of other um racers out there recent, the uh, collisions. recent g-force changes it's also gotten a bit more difficult than so your last bet. Yeah, that's true. It's even even easier to, to G out, especially laterally. Um, let's see if we can, uh, while we're setting up for the next race, let's see if we can get second saber uh, in here and chat with them a little bit. Results are all set. All right, Saber. Hey. Hi. Hey, Stealing. You just was wondering if you're happy to, uh, you know, talk on stream a little bit and just, you know, talk to us about what it was like there uh, at the end there when you were, um, I guess, in, you know, ended up in first place and ended up taking the win with that one. Also, congratulations. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a pretty chill lap. Honestly, I just did the pace that I have from the immense amounts of practice that I put in on this track for for weeks, as you know. And, uh, you know, I could hear someone in my ear behind me, so I just stepped on at the end, made it across the line first. Awesome. I guess, what uh, what would you say is perhaps the most difficult part of this track for you? Uh, the Aurora. Having to buy cord everything. That makes sense. Just because why? Because it's uh, that's the only way to get the the most powerful thrust out of it. Yeah, to get the most out of the ship, I have to fly it in a way that makes coming through some of these tight checkpoints a little hairy. I'd say that's the challenge. Makes sense. Well, congrats, and I'll um, let you get back to the uh, let you get back to setting up for the next one. Thanks, Steve. Have a fun day. Really impressed with the uh, with the racers so far on this track. Um, yeah, I guess uh, it looks like racers are getting in position for the for the next one. Absolutely, yeah, people are slowly trickling back onto the grid. No, no. So, full disclosure: while I was watching a different view, I actually ended up blowing up halfway through that race. So I know. Uh, Shocking, you were kind of primary camera for that one. Um, yeah, uh, it looks like you saw a couple collisions too. Like, what? Um, I don't know. What were some of the things you saw in that race? You mean me? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because you said Shaq. Oh, Shaq news. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think Shaq and D3 uh, were in the, but. They seem to have station structure about the same point, only a few hundred meters apart. I guess just making the same mistake of their own. And yeah, most of the racers have been pretty clean on this turn. So I haven't really seen much else other than a few explosions behind me that I had no vision of. Yeah, I, I just almost did it myself. Yep. Yep, Cal. Cal start. I, I was seeing a lot of explosions, but just couldn't. Uh, I saw the flashes, but not necessarily where they were. I'm just trying to stay out of the way of the racers. The um, racing lane, yeah. So difficult to judge distance. Yeah, it's pretty hard to follow these guys around here at these speeds, even in this little shit. Yeah, and they are 
Speed, you get a bit of audio cut, uh, see on stream. So Steve, could you explain to us the racing format for yeah. today? How many races there are, the scoring system, and so on. Yeah, for sure. So we're doing uh, we're doing six races total. So um, we just finished the first race, so that was a sprint. So the racers were doing six laps around the Trussler Twist. Um, so first place is going to get eight points, second place seven, third place six, et cetera, all the way down to eighth place getting one point. Um, and we're going to be adding up the points throughout all the six races today. So next race, this is the 12 lap race, is going to be, um, uh, they're going to get 25 points for the first place. So that first race, you could consider it uh, anything from a warm up to just getting your feet wet on the track, sort of feeling things out. Uh, and then this race is really for um, most of the points that you're going to be getting. Uh, for this race and then after this we're going to head to the icebreaker uh, so this is really testing the racers kind of zero g aurora skills while the next one is going to be testing their um next one is going to be testing uh their um like atmospheric flight and atmospheric uh racing skills and after that the snake bit is kind of a blend of the two it's close in maneuvering and i guess we'll just check with race direction to see when we are ready to start start the next race you know, I will say I'm a little bit disappointed in the lack of uh, shipskin selection over here. Yeah, the Aurora I think has one of the best one of the best skins out there. Uh, the uh, the Icebreak skin that's one of my favorites. It does have a pretty wide range of selection too. And the Aurora is actually one of the few ships where you can actually get um, get skins in game. Funnily enough. You have um, them at least. Yeah, one of the few ships you can do that. There's my zoom. Wells are bringing out this beautiful yellow paint. Very nice. Right, it looks like the back of the grid is just getting filled in. And it looks like we are pretty close to getting started. I believe most people are here, if not everyone. Yeah, um, I guess... Yeah, checks yeah. out everyone yeah. using here. All right, race directions, do we have a, are we, we go for the main race, for the main? Yes, just double checking grid and uh, we should be so set in a few. Thank you. Copy. Bye. And then just... All right, and then just clear out that next race timer uh, when it starts that we go uh, straight to the results. You know, I am surprised to see Shekna at the front again. Three minutes. Sorry, I cut your speed away. It's all good. But yeah, I'm, I'm surprised to see Shaq here uh, just in the front of the pack again, even though he's been not racing for a while. I expected him to have a little bit more rust. Yeah, I think Shaq knew... I think one of his last races was... I want to say last year. Definitely he raced in the Stanton Cup round four and some division racing. But um, he's been taking a bit of a break from racing. I think we haven't seen him in uh, the exhibitions this year. I think we haven't seen him. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen since we've seen Shaq New. Uh, but yeah, it's I great. Stanton Cup. Yeah, I think I think since the well, that's right, Stanton Cup round four was this year. So yeah, I think it's been since then that we've seen him. Uh, now he him was in the Icebreaker Division race as well. That's right. I just I'm trying to remember the order it was right because we had the Stanton Cup round four. We had beautiful, which is beautiful Glenn. We had by Jeannie Blitz Division race. Yeah, yeah, I think those are the last. Yep. All right. Yeah, because we had the huge delay there. Yeah. All right. Let's get. We'll get.
get Shack New targeted. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on I guess the top of the track and then Speedweed if you want to I guess continue what you're doing following the leaders um, and maybe focus more on the towards the bottom of the track. Um, gotcha. Sixty seconds. Another challenging thing about this track. Story. Another challenging thing about this track is actually the lighting because uh, the sun will change positions on the station. So practicing at all different times, you have all different lighting uh, lighting scenarios. So like right now. Um, the far side of the station that we're on is basically dark, and this side of the station is lit. So you have to be able to practice in kind of all different lighting conditions. I think they'll have a pretty long cycle. Do you think we will see nighttime over here by then? I I don't think we'll get to nighttime. I hope not. We don't have really great headlights over here. I don't think we'll get to nighttime on this track yet. Uh, I think so. Basically, we we timed all of these races back to back so that um, they would be in the daytime for all the racers, with the exception that uh, the icebreaker qualifying was at night. All right? Looks like we are about ready to get started. All right, and they are off. Looks like we have Kyrexi pulling ahead of Shacknew. Coming up through. Shacknew taking it gentle. We have Dude 3D. It looks like Dude 3D is in the lead, heading down through the keyhole. Wow, Dude 3D is gunning it. Oh, this is an easy one to overspeed. It looks like Shacknew is keeping it tight. We have maybe perhaps Tint in the lead. Looks like Tint in the lead coming down through the twist. Oh, there's a huge, there's a huge bundle in there. Get it on board with Shack New. Looks like we just saw Tint hit the start we finish. Lost Tight up. group. And coming up through the tower for the second time. This was also an easy one to very much overspeed on. You can see Kyrexi kind of took it wide, and looks like. I think we have. S I think that second saber in the lead. It sure looks like it. And so this one, uh, being a 12 lap race, uh, there's a lot of time to sort of make up make up time. So I wouldn't be. You know, you're not going to win it necessarily in the first lap, and it's definitely easy to crash. Oh, looks like we had a second saber. Missed it going into the twist, perhaps. Cameraman down. All right, down one camera. And again, Dude3D gunning it. The lead is changing all over this one. Watch the racers as they arc through the tower. Kyrexi keeping it tight, and I th think getting the lead. This is, I need to get in closer for this and watch the group come through to into the twist. Also a challenging track for the camera because you have to make sure not to hit the station geometry. It looks like Kyrexi, uh, Kyrexi with a very smooth dive down into the twist. Connor, Kyrexi, and Saber. Oh! oh looks like, we... yep, Saber and Jaw the Brave. Looks like we had a collision up in the chute. And Kyrexi uh, coming up to the tower and sort of pre pitching so that as he comes through the tower, yep, we got the flip and burn. Uh, Connor doing the same and accelerating. Looks like Kyrexi is just in front, coming into the keyhole. Catch up with Shacknew. We have Shacknew just coming into the keyhole as well. Um, yeah, we can see Kyrexi with Connor just behind. Yeah, Shacknew just entering the twist, and we've got Connor and Kyrexi dueling, coming through the start finish. Looks like Kyrexi kept it tighter. Connor oversped a little bit. And then back up to the tower. Connor just behind. Kyrexi has a pretty good flip coming through their pre-flip. Looks like Connor maybe flips a little later, but yeah, Kyrexi just keeps a lot of speed coming through that. We've got them through the keyhole. Uh, I think we have Shacknu in third. Yep, yeah, Shacknu just entering the keyhole, so Shacknu is about to turn behind the leaders.
Uh, KSR, how is it looking start finish? It looks like we've got Kyrexi and Connor coming down towards you. Yeah, a lot of debris down here, so it's gonna be interesting to see if they if they collide with that. I think it's inevitable that somebody's gonna hit it. There's a, a lot there. I'll see, looking through, yeah, we have Shackner just sort of keeping a gentle, easy pace coming up to the tower. There's one right there. Gaining on Kyrexi. Oh yeah, it looks like we lost. Looks like we lost Connor. I think that's a, a Connor Riznik DNF. Yep. The keyhole is full of debris. It's just going to eat these ships. And we're halfway through the race, so it looks like they're going to have to. Um, they are going to have to be uh, come through the cargo chute to twist, and then be very gentle coming through chart finish. So yeah, it looks like we've got tent, tent and Kyrexi coming through. Taking it easy. We've got let's see, Shaknu coming through. Oh, there's a oh. It's like Shaq knew, yep, hit some of that debris you were talking about, Kayla Star. Camera back. All right, Kyrexi entering the keyhole. He's got a follow from Speedweed. So yeah, watching, watching Kyrexi coming through, entering the twist. Done through. Uh, reminder myself not to park my own ships on the racing line and clutter things up. Uh, it looks like we have Tint in close contention. We've got Tint about a second behind Kyrexi. Looks like Tint has definitely made up some ground now that we've uh, the pack has thinned out a little bit. We're down to four four racers left running. We've got Kyrexi, Tint, Ruskal, and Kelsar. Tint is right behind Kyrexi. Oh, this is this is tight. This is a battle right here. Coming in through the twist, looks like Kyrexi is doing a drift, but Tent might be keeping it a little bit tighter. And they are pretty much neck and neck going down into the start finish. Yeah, it looks like close, maybe I a think, second though. I think that was a Tent overtake. It was too late. Yep, that was a Tent Just overtake. Just at the last second. All right, so we've got right. Tent heading down into the keyhole. Yeah, Tent the From the hangar in, and coming into the twist. I think it's really- It seems to have gained quite the time on Kyrex now, actually. And I think we have a, a DNF from Kalsar. Yep, Tent, uh, I guess in that sort of, Tent's got the kind of clear air and is just gunning it. Um, tent being one, I know Tent does a lot of different ship testing and a lot of um, uh, has definitely spent time in the Aurora and other ships. Uh, tent actually having figured out that uh, in atmosphere the Aurora LN actually has a longer boost time than the other Auroras for some reason, maybe due to its, its heavier whatever. But um, you know, some stuff you can really only figure out through practical testing. And now Tent definitely puts in the time to, to do that. Okay, and then uh, Kyrexi, yep, about a turn behind. We have Tint entering the start finish. I think if Tint can just keep it clean, uh, going through all the debris and start finish, I think he might have this one. Uh, there's always room for Kyrexi to catch up. Uh, let's see, we have, yeah, Kyrexi about five seconds behind. How tight tent takes that. Kyrexi behind. Let's catch them as it goes to start finish. We've got Rust Call, I think, on lap down. Kyrexi crashes on the finish line. Oh, yep. Kyrexi's out. We have Tint on the final lap. And Rust Call just needs to finish that. Riskel's on lap 11, just needs to finish that to then take the second place. Because even though Kyrexi DNF'd, he DNF'd on the last lap. So it looks like we are... Both of them entering the cargo chute. 10 a lap ahead of Riskel. And there we have it. 10 across the line. Congrats, 10. That was, that was a marathon nice race. A lot that happened in only eight minutes.
Great job. I think we might have had some Microtech security crash on the station as well there. Which that is always me. good. I was to attacked. See. I don't know why. Oh. Well, that's not oh, so good. Oh, you might have gotten too close to the uh, security arms. All right. We've got. Ah. Yeah, they don't like that. Catch up with risk call. Uh, risk call entering the twist for the final time. And across the line. Good racing, everybody. That, that was intense. Yeah, so many explosions at uh, start finish. All right, and I guess let's wait for uh, race direction to get the results. Actually, but let's. I'm just going to check out the start finish. Let's sort of see what we're looking at in terms of debris, what the racers had to contend with. Um, let's take a closer look. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, this is just looking like extending up round four. Start line is completely riddled with Aurora Corps. That is, wow. That is the Aurora Graveyard. This was our last race here, correct? Yep, this is our last race, so we are going to be moving on to the icebreaker next after this. Yeah, maybe um, so we will let the uh, microtech services clean the stuff and stuff. Yeah, that's one thing about the start is uh, coming race down to the cart. All set, moving to icebreaker. All right, looks like race results are set, and we're moving to icebreaker. Let's get those results on screen. So folks that uh, get a do not finish result, uh, they still, uh, you still get credit for however many laps you finished. So, uh, and then we still rank those in order. Um, so it looks like we still have a top 10 grid, you know, um, or top 10 results. So we'll have um, Tint getting 25 points out of this, uh, and then Russ Call getting 18, and then uh, going down the line. Uh, but yeah, this was, yeah, this was, this was an intense race. Uh, let's see if we can get a uh, tint up here. Steve, uh, snake pit, icebreaker. Uh, icebreaker. 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 All right. Um, I guess some stuff to to talk about. We're waiting for the next race to start. Um, so. These exhibition races uh, over here at XGR, these are just uh, hosted by members of the community. So everybody can, um, if you're a member of the community, you, you know you have an idea for a race, you can um, essentially, you know, make the event, tell other people about it. Uh, people have run all sorts of different events and it's really fun to see uh, kind of everybody's creativity, um, you know, from, you know, I, I like the Aurora, so I'm hosting this one, but um, we've had everything from, you know, Cutlass races in two directions around uh, Yadar for uh, boom. We had um, yes, we, uh, how would uh, you had a race at Astralis Pinball? How did how did that go? Yeah, the anniversary event with 300s. It was a um, explosive experience, so to say. It's complete chaos and mayhem. <laughs> it was for a lot of fun though. We had a pretty amazing turnout. Honestly, I expected a lot less people, but yeah, it was, it was a super fun day. That's what, yeah, something, 20 racers at least that were there. Uh, I think even more, yeah. Please. Yeah, I know I missed that one, but that was, that was fantastic. Should we uh, grab Tint? Yep, let's, let's see if we can grab Tint in here. I'll go back down. Oh. to come up here and chat and sort of see how things were for him for that race. Um, that was definitely a uh, sort of come from, the, come from the back type situation. Um, 
you know, just kind of waiting. I think Sam was probably just waiting for things to clear up so he could get in there and um, have sort of a, a clean race. So we have Clint here. Hello. Hey, hey guys. Yeah, it was definitely, um, I got lucky when I took that big hit off the start finish box that I didn't actually lose any of the Mavs, I just lost the wings. And so it may have actually helped me later on once I was able to get reoriented because I was pushing less mass, but I don't know. No, that's true. Yeah, um, I guess talk about that a little bit. How does uh, how does the mass affect your, your racing in, in Star Citizen, and I guess in the Aurora too? I mean, so this is part of the, the simulation element of SC. So we do get fixed thruster outputs that are in Newtons in the physics engine. And then from there, the ship's mass affects how that translates into actual speed gain and, and loss, which is also why racers strip their ships of extra components. The mass lost is speed gained. So you're saying you kind of got a, a bit of a, a dice roll there where losing a couple wings, you perhaps shed some mass and then that could have helped you get a little bit more acceleration out of the same thruster input. Absolutely. Well, what, uh, so what was it like going through, uh, it looked like the start finish had sort of the most debris. Um, I don't know, again, you took a hit through there. It looks like you were really clean uh, coming through there on subsequent laps. Um, yeah, how, how, how was that? How did you how did you navigate the start finish and sort of, uh, you know, stay alive? I, I mean, honestly, 50% luck, 50% just being used to unpredictable racing. Um, I spotted a clean line on, I think it was the lap after Saber uh, popped in the in the box and there was a clean line on the low side and i think most of the other guys that that blew up went to the high side of it and so the debris just kind of kept stacking up and the low line that i was taking stayed clean makes sense yeah i was kind of seeing that in the post uh looking at a post race all of the debris seemed in the high side so it seemed like if you yeah if you went uh went low uh, you can carve that but yeah uh good luck i guess anything you're looking forward to or for this next uh, icebreaker race I, I'm looking forward to, to Icebreaker. I want to I wanna see if I can get Shaq. He got me in qualies, but he's, there's a little bit of rust on him, so we got to see if we can bring him down. All right. Well, good luck, Tint. I'll let you head back there. Nice good luck. Good job. Good job, Tint. All right, I am just landing my Corsair with the Fury inside. Use your camera. Steven Speed, we did just uh, tag the guys or something. Quick. Copy. Excuse me? What? Was that look? This part mentions. Copy. I see that. So, yeah, let's see another thing. Uh, Speed, can you talk about the uh, monthly raffles uh, for a bit that we have going for exhibition events? And, uh, tell folks about those. So every month we have a, a one ship to give away, but this month is a special since it's, it's the holidays this month, we will be giving away a ship to every week or every race of uh, picking person randomly, I believe. Am I correct there? Yep. Of all so the many. participants. I believe. And I think this month is a, and yeah, we're, we're giving away one every week, including, uh, I think there'll actually be one that we're going to give away after this icebreaker race. We're going to give away an Aurora MR to one of the exhibition participants from November, December. Um, yeah, what is the... Bit of stream stutter, stream stutter. Stream stutter? All right, thank you. I actually do not know what the other ships are right now. I can't find the list. I believe, yeah, it's going to be an Aurora MR and then, uh, which we'll give away today. And then the other one for the end of the month is going to be, uh, it is going to be a Spirit C1 or a Spirit A1. So that'll be our December exhibition raffle.
So Steve, a lot of people have been hungry for competition events, you know, besides exhibitions. You have something in the Verge Dungeon. That's right. Um, so it's going to be starting next year. We're going to have a uh, sort of save the date and announce a post, but um, competitive racing is going to be coming back to uh, come back to XGR. So uh, the idea is to run, uh, there'll be a series, some interconnected races and some scoring, and we'll have more details for you uh, after that. So uh, stay tuned awesome. for more details. I'm really excited for this. It's about time we hit some. It's been a while. Yeah, it has, I think. Um, since division racing and since the uh... and honestly I've always really liked season racing with the um... with the Stanton Cup and everything I just I really like and as a racer I really like just having uh, you know my points carry over uh, from race to race I just I, I really like that yeah I do miss the Stanton Cup but at the same time also a little bit not, you know, it's so much commitment, but it's a lot of fun. 60 no, seconds. Sorry about that, guys. I crashed twice in a row. Not a problem. Right, let me just get us into position. So we're getting our overhead set up. We've got Shaq Newton pole position on the line. I am about to arrive as well. Got it. All right, let me know when you're ready, and then I'll be able to uh, cut you in. Looks like that might have been a might have been a CTD up there, possibly. You for you. No, oh, sorry, not for me. For uh, one of the racers is uh, up in space spinning. Uh, do 3D, I know. Star Citizen can be un unforgiving sometimes. Well, let's hope he uh, had coupled more down for that. He might just get back right there. Yeah, that. hopefully. And then, um, all right, here we go. Track new and pull. We've got Kyrexi behind, Dude 3D catching up. So I guess that was just desync for Dude 3D heading up the climb. Track new heading through the crossover. Now, luckily, there's no racers coming through, but there is always a crossover risk. Uh, heading into the Matterhorn. We've got Shaq new. We've got a big cluster of racers behind, Dude 3D, Kyrexi, 10. There. Matterhorn is definitely a very tight turn spot. Good for overtakes if you can do it. Looks like 10 overtaking Dude 3D. Shaknu's still in front. Kyrexi behind. That racer's taking it very tight, going through Frostbite. Uh, and then we are up into the wall. Looks like Shaknu's got a couple seconds on Kyrexi. Uh, so racers, we're coming up to a long straight, so racers are probably going to want to save their boost for this long straight, and that's also a good place for people to overtake. So let's see if we can get... I believe we might have an issue with our race over there. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait for the racers to come on the race over there. Uh, I think yeah, we should see them populate after that first lap. Looks like our, our top three, we've got, okay, we've got another DNF. We have Dala. Um, Shaknu keeping the gap pretty consistent back to Kyrexi. Dude 3D and Tent very close together. It's like Dude 3D staying ahead of Tent. And here we're heading to the start finish. Let's catch these racers as they come up the climb. And they head into that first turn. Yeah, less than a second separating Shaknu and Kyrexi. Shaknu keeping This truck nice is so second. huge. It's like watching them in slow motion. That is massive. It's 
see if we can get an onboard with Shaknu coming through. So Shaknu keeping it rolled on the side uh, to get sort of the best aerodynamics, uh, getting lift as he pulls it in. Let's see, he's probably going to roll right here. Yep, rolling coming Can in. Right up, Steve. And then Shaknu coming down to frostbite. So let's see, let's see our overhead. Let's look towards the back of the pack. We've got Second Saver and Connor Riznik and Neojet all in a kind of tight group behind. All right, let's check in with Speedweed. We've got the racers coming in to through that next set of turns. How can I forget that? Um, so would you remember what that set of turns is by the Metro Loop? I don't know why I'm blinking. My fish is cold. I All right. do not remember. All right, Speedweed. Oh, oh, sorry. We had a collision with Kelzar and Broccoli Rob. Yeah, I guess we'll see if that turns into a DNF. One thing I do like about racing the Aurora is uh, it can take and give a couple hits and keep racing. I know sometimes you hit someone and, and Aurora and M50 and you're, or a Razor and M50 and it can be game over on the Fury if you lose any. They are definitely the... We had another double collision with Connor Riznik and the Lord Newton. They are out of the race. So Shaq New over the line for that lap two. Kyrexi next, tint just behind, dude 3D. Let's watch the other racers as they come across. Looks like we have a decent separation of the second second gap. Oh yeah, we had... Um, Alerted to yep, kind of and MK Zool coming in. Yeah, MK Zool. Across the line with four minutes. Looks like Kelsar next. Call over the line, followed tightly by Barkley Rob. Oh wow, seven. Barkley actually survived. Oh. And DJT Geek across the line. It looks like that is the final racer. Actually, let's see if we can take a look at Barkley Rob's strip and see if there's any pieces missing after that collision. Oh, looks like intact. I see four wings. Could have been a lucky Let's bump. See. The Aurora definitely, if you start losing wings, it does start flying a little squirrely. So while you can take hits. In that sense, it is a lot like the Razor. Yeah, it's true. You lose a couple wings and keep going. All right, we well, yeah, great, had great performance out of Shackney there. It looks like racers are going to start lining up for that main race. So let's get some results up. All right, so we'll wait for race direction to get a confirmation on the results. Yeah, Kalistar, uh, what did you think? How, how, how did that race look for you? Results all set. All right, looks like results are up. Actually, we might have lost. Looks like we might have lost Kayla Star. Uh, but yeah, Speedy, I guess. Uh, what are you thinking the uh, main is going to go like uh, with four laps per racer? Well, uh, I didn't back. because uh, I card crashed twice in a row. Ah. Ouch. Yeah. Well, I think we see pretty consistent runs by Shark now. With Dude and Kyraxi closely following. So I think these four guys actually are a huge contention for first place. I don't know. I feel like it could be any of them, you know. It, it only takes one mistake to screw up. Let's see, it looks like we have. Okay, we have points in scoring, so we have kind of our, our halfway. 
results so far. So let's see if I can I can read out the standings here. All right, so the standing so far, looks like we've got Tint in first place with 31 points, followed by Risk Hall with 26 points. That's from that second place. So, you know, that great second place finish in main one and a finish in every, everything else. Yeah, we had Risk Hall finishing all three with so 26 points. Kyrexi in third with 22 points. Kelsar in fourth with 19. Shaq Nguyen in fifth with 18. Striker seven and six with 13. Uh, Amzul in sevens with 11. Second Saber uh, in. Just make sure I get the numbers right. Uh, second Saber in eighth with 10 points. Connor Riznik in ninth with nine points. And Duke 3D in tenth with six points. So we have, you know, with 25 points to go on this race for the winner, and then another sprint, and then a main on, uh, on Snake Pet. I think it's anybody's game. And I think uh, if, if Shaq New pulls out a good result in the second main, I think that'll that'll catapult him back uh, in contention with Tint. But then if, if Tint, I think, also finishes, I think we've got, it could go either way. These auroras in the back here on the overflow, like birds perching on trees. I know, yeah, this is definitely. It's definitely a tough grid to set up just because um, you have this nice platform in front where everybody can get set up, but as you go back towards the grid or in the back, uh, you start running out of good spots to put racers, so. You know, we have some folks that are, yeah, even being in the grid, they've got to be on top of some of the buildings there. All right, we've got, it looks like Madcap finished setting up the grid and is heading to an overhead position. All right, we've got a lovely third person shot from Shock New here. That is beautiful. Um, actually, let's see if we can uh, drag Shock New in here. And, See if we can talk to him about that that first sprint. Uh, Speedy, do you think you can go uh, chat with Shaq and see if you can drag him in here? I can go, but I'm... I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, and that I love that shot with Cleo in the background. It's I love that. Uh... <laughs> Cleo is large enough that you can see it from Uterpy. Uh, Cleo, of course, being where the Snake Pet our second race is, is going to be held. Or third race, sorry. Beautiful view of it, yeah. All right, I'm going to post these interim results for folks just so that they have, they know the standings going into the next race. Shrek is present. Hello. Hello, Shaq New. Hey, Shaq New. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I guess what, um, as how, how did you feel running that race? It looked like you, it was fairly clean for you as you were uh, in the lead for most of it. You know, did you hear other racers behind? You know, what, what were you, what were you thinking? Yeah, I'm definitely in my comfort zone. Heavy that mode. Uh, I think what I have the most experience in. I definitely heard one or two. Oh, Shaq. Oh. You're turning into an actual robot there. Uh oh. Come, come again, please. How about now? Can you hear me? Uh, not really. Still pretty bad. Hang on a second. 
The guy slowly evolves into an actual machine. Hello. We hello, apologize hello. on stream for our audio mishaps. How about now, the robot? Seems to be better. A little better. Cool. Um, yeah, as I was saying, have yet yeah, definitely my comfort zone. It's what I have most experience in. I definitely heard ships behind me. Uh, one, if not two, ships right behind me. Um, I, I assume that was correct. The and or tent. Um, the rate that we did here, uh, one of the division races with the 350R, uh, there's a lot of concepts and the skills that were learned from there that can be applied here. Um, uh, TVI, crosshair management, I'd say is the biggest thing here. Um, the boot strategy, I tested it out, uh, I think it's roughly the same. Uh, compared to the 350R in terms of keeping it optimal. Um, but yeah, really just uh, I really tend to favor the very precision type rating where you're really babysitting that TVI crosshair alignment. And I think it's, as long as somebody is doing that consistently, it's uh, you have to be a lot more patient with overtaking somebody, especially if you're starting off in the back of the grid. Being the front definitely has an advantage here. Yeah, I think uh, we'll have to uh, cut it a bit, Jack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, just uh, to help our users. Now. Roger. Was it somewhere it's supposed to go? I think he. Yeah. Nope. All right, thanks, Jack. Appreciate you talking. Um, I think, yeah, still robotic, but yeah, appreciate you, you sharing how that went with us. All right, cheers, <laughs> and good luck in the main. Thanks. Please. I am a robot. I guess, say again, speed. <laughs> zero, zero, one, zero, zero. <laughs> we no, are I ready, think... guys. We are ready, all right. Let's go. And I shut off the start from here. Sixty seconds. All right, sixty seconds to restart. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, Shack News definitely. I mean, I know it was a little hard to hear him, but talking about um, just sort of the precision and TVI management. Um, one thing you'll see. Uh, with Shaq New is if you're watching his TVI, he keeps it, and a lot of the fast racers, um, they keep their vector indicators. Just a little refresh on that overlay, please, T. Oh, I think uh, I think it's a yep, it's refreshed. I think my what I see is a little delayed from what the stream is, so I think the stream is gonna. Let's see. Yep, there we go. It's ready to go. I see main two zero zero. They're off. Looks like we've got Shaq New in front. Close behind Kyrexian Dude 3D in tent. Second Saber. Connor Neo Judge just behind. They've got a pretty tight group at the front. Shaq New, of course, having that pole position is just uh, keeping pace. Dude 3D and Kyrexian very close to each other. Yeah, Broccoli Rob and Roskai. Uh, oh no, Roskai survived. Uh, Kyrexi. Shaken and Kyrexi fighting for the first place. Gap really close in there. They're neck and neck. Oh, looks like Tint 3D and Dude 3D had a collision. 
we've got a, definitely a gap between Kyrexi and back with second Saber and Connor. So it is it's very tight between these two. Uh, visibility, of course, being a challenge on the icebreaker once you get down close. Steve, watch out, you're very close in the line. Oh no, we lost Kyrexi on that last turn. It's Shaq New all alone now. Alright, then I guess here's Shaq New coming to the second lap. Yep, Shaq on to left here. Quite the gap to. Uh... Connor Saber and Neo, but they're all within about a second of each other. Let's catch up with Shackney coming through Matterhorn. You can see he rolls that he's always. Whenever he turns and he's pitching, it's always directly up to get sort of the most lift and the, the least drag. And always pre-rolls very early before his turns. Connor and Saber are still super close together. Yeah, they are very much, very close pace. And looks like we had an overtake, potentially. Yes, uh, I think so. Oh, it's, it's a fight. It keeps going back and forth. Neo and Connor. We have, there's almost that entire back sprint separating Shaq New and Neo, but it is, or, uh, it is pretty tight between Neo Jet, Second Saber, and Connor Wisnik. And we have a second group back there uh, Kelsar, Jacobin, and Emsel. See, Speed, we want to keep uh, focusing on the second group, Connor, Neo, and Saber. Yep, I'm keeping an eye on them. That's what you said, the yep. LDO bog screwed me over. Alright, let's do Next, okay, we've got Kelsar and then Amsul and Jacodin are very much neck and neck. They're very close together. We've got, yeah, about 10 seconds separating Shaq New and Neo Jet, so I think it's up to Shaq New. It's Neo, Saber, and Connor right now in this order. It seems like Neo was able to kind of run away from that creep a little bit now. Oh, yeah, uh, that gap opened up. Right over near Speed Trap, yeah, Neo pulled away. Saber Connor still neck and neck. Okay, we've got Shaq New approaching uh, the Speed Trap. The the back straight. So, looks like, yep, he's got full boost tank just as he enters, and he's going to burn that boost and go all the way down to that speed trap. Yeah, following. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Connor formed a little bit of a gap, but Saber is still right on him, and Neo is not that much further ahead. They are very similar pace. I mean, a, a track like this to stay this close after two and a half laps is, is they have a very similar pace. They're definitely, definitely battling for it. Now that's racing right there. That is. All right. Hello, everybody. We are back at the snake pit after a short break. Um, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, thanks for bearing with us uh, for a short delay, but we are ready to start uh, sprint one at the snake pit. So um, just about ready to go. Uh, after the end of the last icebreaker race, we have 
Uh, Shockno in the lead with 43 points, Tint in second with 31, Kelsar in third with 29. So there's eight points up for grad for first place for this heat, so let's see how they do. All right, race direction, we are go. We are a go, thank you. All right, they're off. We've got Shackno in the front. We've got a whole bunch of racers going oh, through. 2-3-D went wide there through Drifters, looks like. I think he avoided the collision, but he did He did blow that wide. Copy, right neck and neck with Tint. We've got Shackno uh, just ahead of Kyrexi. Shackno having gotten some more world records on this course, so he definitely knows it's like the back of his hand. Uh, Kyrexi, though, very close to Shackno. Let's get closer in here. Shack new snake just ahead of Kyrexi that looks like maybe a second. It looks like the gap is opening up. Shack new just coming into the end of this first lap. Maybe this is for four laps. Connor is following in third. Oh, just a couple seconds All behind right. Kyrexi there. Copy this evening, got a wide view, so. Shaknu with Kyrexi, yep, and then Connor just entering Drifter's Paradise as Shaknu and Kyrexi exited. Got Shaknu coming through the pinch, keeping that gap to Kyrexi through Nino's Alley up Emerald Avenue. and clean. Let's see where Connor, let's see, we've got Tent and Neo, about a third of a lap behind. It's like Connor just entering this back straight as Shaknu and Kyrexi exit it. Shaknu on to lap three. We've got it's a like Shaknu has broadened that, uh, or widened the gap just a little bit. Uh, same with Kyrexi and Connor. Kyrexi has pulled, a, pulled ahead quite a bit. Right, let's onboard with Shaknu. Shaknu using reshade to get extra visibility. And coming through the pinch. Uh, visibility with the sun right there, I think, just just going down is challenging. Uh, difficult conditions. Passing some back markers. Oh, we had so a collision. Looks like Ricky Tiki is a DNF. Looks like Shackney might have taken a little bit of damage there. Let's see, let's look at it on the overhead. All right, we've got, yep. Second Saber has definitely pulled ahead of Connor Riznik there. Uh, and then Neo and Tent still pretty close. And it looks like we have Shaknu coming on to the final lap of the sprint. Gap still pretty consistent with Kyrexi. And there we go through the through the start finish. Connor may have sustained some damage there. It does look like he's limping on the track now. Being passed by Tint and Neo, closely followed. Shaknu targeted so we can see. Yep, very with the with the storms and the sunset, this is this is definitely some difficult snake bit racing. Uh, and just you know, with with the short delay racers having to contend with more difficult visibility than normal, but that is part of racing in the PU rather than the simulator. You don't always get to control the visibility conditions. Oh, it looks like uh, DNF from tent. Second Saber, oh, it looks like Tint and Second Saber collided. Shaknu, Kyrexi still up. Oh, looks like, yep, Shaknu over the line. Kyrexi over the line, Shaknu first. Kyrexi just behind. Risk call well is done, a lap down. Well, yeah, well done, Kyrexi and Shaq. I think, let's see if we can find NeoJet. Neo, like, uh, Neojet's in last bite there. There we go, yep. Neojet last bite. And it looks like Neojet is going to take third place in this sprint. Well done, Neo. 
awesome job. All right. Let's look for. So it looks like Connor is next and contending with some back markers there. And we have Connor coming through last. Oop, might have been a bump there or desync. Connor just. Oh, let's see if. Connor dodging that collision right before the finish. And then there we go. Connor across the line. Nice job, Connor. That's a nice job. Nice, nice finish. Great. That was a great job. That was a great dodge. Yeah, it does look like he sustained some damage there at, uh, at some point. He was limping quite a bit. Okay, we've got a couple racers still running. Looks like, yep, Rust Call's the last one running. That's Cash of Rust Call as we come as gorgeous Cleo sunset and over the line. Nice racing, everybody. Great job. Ooh, definitely challenging in the sunset. Uh, what did you think, Hale? There were definitely a lot of, we had a lot of collisions and close racing on there. Yeah, I really wanted to see the uh, battle between Neo and Tint play out there for a little while longer. Looks like we were just in the golden hour at the snake pit, so right when the sun is going down, um, the it's lights are all off. To see. At, the lights are all off at the snake pit, and once it hits just about sunset, all of the lights are going to switch on. So next race, we'll actually have hopefully slightly better visibility with the lights, with the lights on. Yeah, let's see if we can get some results, results up. We should maybe get uh, pull pull Shaq and Kyrexia in here and let's uh yeah let's let's do hear it hear from them let's, about that battle let's try with them can you go up there and and drag him in love about these exhibition races is um, with the with the tier racers that comes in sometimes it still gets pretty competitive even though these races are generally more on the casual side um, you know they can be as competitive as the folks make it so it's just really exciting to see some of the folks there that you know have world records coming here racing the Aurora um, just kicking butt what's up guys hey Shaq New hey Kyrexi how's it going it's a pretty close doing? race talk to us about it could you uh, could you see uh, I'm pretty close no. At least from my perspective, it was really bad the entire time. Yeah. I was at uh, Dino Alley, and I decided to basically switch over to Green Jade while I was flying, and it helped a little bit, but half the race, you're basically looking at the sun, and it's at like the perfect angle to where not only the blind can do, but the around the time when the storm picks up, so it's kind of a double whammy for everybody here, regardless of whether you have rejade or not. Yeah, that was impressive, just... you you sticking behind him, Kyrexi. I mean, I had I had a guide through the storm, you could say that, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. No, that was incredible. I know we, we popped in to watch your onboard for a bit of that shack, and it was uh, with the sunset, uh, I think it's actually more challenging visibility than when it's completely dark. And uh, one thing that we yeah. noticed now is after the race ended, all of the lights switched on. Um, so you're actually racing in probably the worst visibility you can get at the snake pit, which is all of the track lights are off and you have the sunset casting shadows. So yeah, really, really awesome job and, and clean racing through that. I uh, think it's really the amount of time I spent here in the model memory behind it that, that I think really just helped me out a lot. There are a lot of moments from like, okay, I think I need to start pitching up here. So I just did it. I just trusted myself to do it. How did it feel yeah, racing luckily, the... Yeah, the Aurora is a fairly forgiving ship to fly, so at least we had that going for us. There's a lot more time. Yeah, how does how does that feel racing that in low visibility compared to like, you know, P-72s, for example, where your, your lap time is about half? Yeah, I mean, in the P-72s, it's, it's in those kind of conditions, I honestly probably wouldn't even try, but that's a lot better in these. Yeah, they're beautiful. 
the handle and it's more weak and then the higher delta T to be able to make decisions on the fly. Uh, if you were flying Merlin or Archimedes here, um, I don't know. <laughs> we would have had as many survivors. But yeah, Aurora is amazing here. It's amazing in every track. I, I love this trip. Yeah, we had at least eight finishers on this last on that last one. So, um, or not finished, but yeah, we, we had we had a bunch of people place really well. Well, um, good luck going into the last main. Um, results wise, I know Shaknu, you're in the head, you're in the lead with 51 points, tenth second with 31, and Kyrexia, you're in third with 20, or tied for three-way tie for third between Kyrexia, Kelsar, and Riskal. So it's going to be an exciting one. So good luck. Thanks for chatting with us, guys. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Up. Appreciate it. Right. Yeah. Looking at looking at these uh, looking at the standings, it looks like we had. We just see how many people actually finished clean. One, two, three, four, five, six. We had seven finishers of that race, which, considering kind of the carnage and the poor visibility, that was kind of incredible, even as a as a four lapper. Oh, for sure. That was pure chaos. I, I went into third person several times to try to catch the booms, but they didn't. Uh, they didn't happen. I expected a, a big cluster at Nino's, but uh, everybody sort of made it through. I think there was only one boom on the first two laps at Nino's. Yeah. No, that was that was wild. Yeah, I'm. Uh, no, I'm, I'm. I'm really excited. So, I guess uh, going forward, we have. Um, yeah, quite a, quite a few points up for grabs as we see everybody come back into the grid. Um, one thing also is we are uh, we are going to be giving away an Aurora uh, MR on the stream, so I think we can do that. To uh, somebody who's participated either in this race or in a in a previous one uh, in November or December, so we'll be I guess spending that shortly. Um, I think we will do it after this main concludes. my list to run everybody through uh, to see who gets the uh, Aurora MR LTI. Yeah, um, So very close. Um, I, I mean, they're they are within striking distance of each other as far as points. Um, yeah, with let's see, many if if Shaq DNFs early, with many racers, they can get 25 points and, and exceed him on this. Um, let's see, we have um, yeah, uh, Tint, Kyrexi, Kelsar, and Ruskal could all. Um, Get the 25 points and exceed Shaq and, and take first. Uh, and second saver, Connor Riznik and Neojet are all 25, 24, and 24 points. Um, yeah, You're they right. could all they they could all easily get second. So this is kind of anybody's game. Hey everybody, we are back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. We just had an exciting uh, sprint race at the Snake Pit. So it was challenging visibility. It was low visibility. Um, but it ended up being uh, Shaknu that came out with the win, so you can just throw those results on there. Um, 
yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited. And actually, uh, I will uh, get those full results with everybody's points that they have so far, and I'll get those up on screen uh, shortly. But yeah, we've got um, one race left. I don't know, uh, Kale, how do you think things have gone across these, these five races that we've had so far? Uh, who, who do you think is uh, in contention to come out on top? I think definitely, uh, definitely uh, Kyrexi, Tint, and Shaq. And Shaq is making making good on his promise that he was going to win this thing. He said that in the beginning, right when you announced it. Um, so we'll see we'll see what happens. I think it's been exciting so far. It's been really cool to see somebody relatively new like Kyrexi hold his own against um, the Speedy Boys. And Tint's always consistent, so it's great that he's up there with Shaq. I think it'll be exciting. And then um, behind them, you've got, uh, I believe, Kelsar, Neo, and uh, one other that could be potentially in the running for points as well. Yeah, I think looking looking at the results, and I'll get those up on screen shortly. Yeah, we've got Kyrexi, Kelsar, and Ruskal that are all uh, all currently tied for third place. And uh, so That's the way amazing. we the way we do tie breaks is whoever does uh, whatever your place is in the last race that you've done. So the the outcome of this race will will decide that three way tie. Uh, as well as the tie for seventh place that uh, Connor and Neojet currently have. Perfect. All right. Uh, let's see if I can get those uh, if I can get those results to show up as well. So we can get a. Uh, that everybody has so far so let's see what we got I'm, I'm really excited with how with how tight this grouping is let's see because we had um, a lot of really tight zero g racing um, which was kind of you know uh, and then we had the icebreaker racing where everybody was very close it was sort of focused on overtakes and now we have the snake pit racing where everybody's very close in together uh, and it requires a lot of uh, a lot of precision I'll leave it up to you, Steve, but um, if you want me to climb aboard with either pole position or someone uh, close to that, I could <clears throat> maybe get some onboard uh, some onboard footage. Yeah, actually, if you want to potentially climb aboard with Kyrexi, that would be awesome. Um... So here's the here's sort of the work in progress results that we have going into the final. Uh, and again, like I said, uh, Shackney first was 15 to one, uh, 10 second was 31. That three-way tie for third place, followed by second Saber, Connor Riznik, Neojet, and Amsel. Uh, we've also had a um, let's see, and uh, Ruskal, for example, very consistent, getting points in every single race going back to the uh, to the first one. Uh, and I think that might be the only the only racer. So we have so um, another thing that, that I should mention is that um, every time you participate in one of these exhibition races, you get an XGR community rank. Um, so that uh, that will um, so we uh, we start at the student ranks, then we go up through uh, rookie, then racer, uh, then pro, and then uh, veteran. So some of these, some of the racers we have are actually going to be earning their veteran stripes in this race. Uh, and veteran is a rank that carries over to the following year. So it's just kind of a, a great way to, to recognize and show, um, you know, who's, um, you know, who's, who's been a part of the community and who's been participating in these races. Oh, I know, yeah, it's, actually. It's been... Oh, go ahead, sorry. sorry. I was going to say it, it, it's been a good addition this year to have those ranks. I think that people have enjoyed uh, accumulating them and displaying them. Uh, it seems like everybody enjoys that part. P. 
15 seconds. All right, looks like they are off. Herexi impacted, went off track. He's coming back on track now. Didn't look like he sustained damage. All right, we've got Shackney with a... Shackney with an early lead. Followed by Dude3D and Tent close behind with Connor. All right, yeah. Shot going into that second lap. Into Drifter's Paradise. Yeah, Shaq has got a pretty decent gap there between Shaq and Dude3D. Tent very close, about a half turn behind, followed by Connor. I think the battle for second, third is going to be very tight. Uh, Kyrexi definitely making up ground. He has passed three already. Yep, he is making yep. up ground. Beautiful slide through drifters. Let's grab Shack News on board. So again, the track lighting is now much brighter now that the lights have actually switched on. And our storm has subsided, which inc substantially increases visibility here. Yeah, this is actually probably better visibility than the in the previous race. Correct, he's got a great line through Nino's. Yep, Kyrexi coming up to the pinch. Yeah, and so... I think Kyrexi can definitely be in contention to catch up for some of those. Next up, oh, looks like we had a... Looks like... Um, possibly DNF, yep, DNF from Second Saber, right? Shekni coming through here, through Drifters. Looks like the gap might have opened up a bit behind Dude 3D and Tint. Let's see if Tint can keep it tighter. Get an Kyrexi overtake on another D3D. overtake going into Drifters. Sorry, sorry, Steve. You're good. Uh, Tint. Very close to Dude 3D. Uh, I think we might. I think there's definitely room for an overtake there. Let's see. Let's see how close they can get. Through Nino's. Yep, there it is. There's the overtake. Tent passing Dude 3D. Beautiful. Beautiful pass. Uh, but Dude 3D keeping it tighter around the pinch. They are absolutely neck and neck. And Kyrexi gaining. Let's see, they're. Both can be coming into turn and burn. Dude 3D keeping it tighter, but Tint passing again. They are just absolutely back and forth for this. It looks like Tint can get ahead on the straights, but Dude 3D can take some of these turns a little tighter. Yep, Dude 3D, yep, passing again through start finish. Beautiful. Beautiful. Looks like we've got Shaq New catching up on some back markers, uh, but still still a pretty decent. Oh! Another DNF? If uh, Tint. Tint spun out on Drifter's Paradise, but uh, so the gap is now much, much bigger back to Dude 3D. So it looks like Dude 3D has opened that up, and it's going to be a challenge for Tint to catch up. Kyrexi is uh, attempting to overtake somebody here. I can't see who it is. I'm in third person, but he's close. Oh, looks like Kyrexi is catching up on Tint after that little mishap that Tint had. Uh, yep. Uh, Kyrexi is definitely in striking distance. Uh, oh, and we had it. Did, oh, and we missed a DNF from Shacknew. Oh, okay. that's who it was. Okay. So it looks like we've got uh, Dude Three D ahead. Well, Kyrexi now... with the overtake. Oh no, he he takes out Tent and Soft Deaths. Kyrexi's out of the race and Tent. Oh wow! I believe that and was Tent. So, yeah, that was Tent. Tent and Kyrexi. Well, Kyrexi, Kyrexi is, like Kyrexi not is out still of the moving. Race. It's still looks moving. Like it's still moving. Taking a beating and keep oh. on ticking. He has uh, it looks like uh, it looks like. Looks like some damage. We've got Connor overtaking Kyrexi through the start finish. You've got Connor now in second. Pretty big gap. Uh, Connor heading into Drifters and then Dude 3D 
do uh, 3D heading into Nino's Bend. Um, there is doing everything you can to keep this together here. Let's focus in on Kyrexi. Looks like, yep, Kyrexi is still holding it together with a getting passed by Neojet and Connor. Let's get in a little close. I believe Kyrexi is missing about half an Aurora there. He is, yes. Yeah, there's only about half of that Aurora, and he is, you can see, he kind of pitches and bobs a little bit, taking those turns, so he's only getting left on one side. Uh, so we've got uh, Connor and Neojet very close, heading into the pinch together. Uh, Connor will pick up quite a few points if he gets second place, and that'll that'll definitely push him up into the top ones. So we've got Neojet taking uh, turn and burn a little wide. Connor's staying well ahead of Neojet coming into, looks like they are finishing lap five, going into lap six. So with eight laps to go, or sorry, uh, eight laps total, it looks like we're on the second to last lap. Let's catch up with Dude3D. Uh, we've got, looks like we've got seven racers still running, if I'm counting correctly. Um, Dude3D heading through Drifter's Paradise. Yeah, there is. I think we have an intense battle for second, and I think Dude3D keeping it clean uh, is looking pretty good to to take it. Yeah, Dude3D into Ninos. You can also see uh, Dude3D does a nice snap where he pitches past the turn and then pitches back on target. We don't see him do it here on the pinch too. You can only see the the targeting bracket pitches past the turn and then he kicks oh, it. Oh, Pyrexia DNF. Oh, Pyrexia DNF. Let's go to the overhead. Looks like, yep, Kyrexi. Looks like that's, uh, yeah, Kyrexi and Aninos. So yeah, we've got Well, I heard an explosion. Was that? I'm missing Dude 3D. Is Dude 3D out? Yeah, I think that was a that was a oh, DNF. No. That was a DNF from Dude 3D. So we've got. Let's catch up with our new leader here. We've got Connor Riznik keeping it steady, followed by NeoJet. Connor is on lap seven, so we're about to finish the second to last lap. Um, very tight around turn and burn. You can tell Connor has definitely practiced that, as has Neo. They had almost identical lines. Uh, Neo and Connor having almost the same pace through this. Uh, through last bite, and then we are on to the final lap. With just under two seconds separating the two of them. This is where all that all that practice counts. I know a lot of the racers have spent time both in the PU and Arena Commander practicing this track. Uh, in the PU, of course, you know, Arena Commander, you can't set it to night, so the only way to get set practice in some of these conditions is to is to do it in the PU, and you can tell you know, who's put in the practice. And it's hard to tell from Steve's view, but when you're closer to the track, your visibility drops substantially um, and uh, when, when there's a storm, and your yes. headlights do not help you. Exactly. It looks clear from up here, but down there, you know, all your all your headlights do is just illuminate the storm. Very tight. Neojet almost catching up with Connor through that. Coming into the final turn. Connor Riznik through last bite. And Connor Riznik takes it. Congrats, and Connor. Neo in a close second. That is just about a second behind, I think. Okay, looks like we had a... And we've... So we have a DNF from Kelsar, we've got, it looks like, DJT Geek and Broccoli Rob still running. And this is their final lap too. So yeah, DJT Geek over the line. Great third place finish, congrats DJT Geek. And Broccoli Rob taking it through last bite. And that's a finish. Congrats, everybody. That was that was well an done. insane well race. Done. That was intense. Well done, everybody. Oof. I think we're so, going to have So glad I went on board for that. Sorry, Steve. So so oh. glad I went on board for that, for sure. Thank you, oh, that's everybody right. on stream and your patience. Uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, 
thank you. Thank you, everybody, for sticking through this. It's, uh, we've had to take a couple breaks, but we've managed to get through all three sprints, all three mains. That's six races. So we'll get the, uh, we'll get the points tabulated. And uh, in the meantime, let's talk to some racers. That, the, <clears throat> the lead in the first couple uh, things went back and forth uh, quite a few times during that race. Who do you want in the chat, Steve? I'll grab them for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's grab. I mean, let's let's grab Connor. Let's let's go to first. Yeah, this is that was that was definitely an exciting one. I can't wait to see how the the points stack up. And we'll just have to wait for a race direction to get those in. Connor, congrats. Hey. Congrats, Connor. It was a pleasure watching you come around. It's very smooth. That's my first first place finish at XDR. Is now a good time to tell you this is one of the tracks I didn't practice in this <laughs> era? Well, I mean, we were. I was saying on stream, it, it looked the way you'd taken some of those turns, like uh, especially through turn and burn, you know, it looked like you had really put in the practice and knew how to take those lines and just really tight, really smooth. You were just barely ahead of NeoJet for so much of the yeah. last half of the race. Yeah, Neo was, uh, Neo, <laughs> that was scary with him because I kept hearing him come up from behind me and I knew he was close, but I couldn't see him with my head tracking. So I didn't know where he was, just that he was really close to me. Uh, but yeah, no, that was, that was exhilarating. I didn't even realize until like halfway through lap eight that it sunk in that he said leader on final lap as I crossed the line. I'm like, what? That doesn't mean me. <laughs> that, yeah, that's but you. That's a, just, yeah, you just keep racing. I know uh, Dude3D had it was pretty far ahead of you, and it um, and just there was, I think, a DNF on that on that last lap. So it was, you know, the lead switch to you, and you, you pulled it out. So congrats. Thank you. Thank you. It's good fun. I think that would put you... I think yeah, that'll put you at 49 points. I think if you got the 25, so that's definitely, it's definitely up there. So yeah, congrats, good racing. Sweet, thank you. Right, cheers. Let's see. Um, should we talk to let's, Should we talk to NeoJet? Sure. Yeah. In the meantime, let's see. Let's see how our results are looking. Looks like. Hey, Neo, good racing. Yeah, congratulations, yeah, well, well, Neojet. Thank place. you. Most difficult is Snipjet. Second place? Really? In this in this race. Ah, okay, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I didn't know till, uh, till I arrived to the, to the final when you say corner race. Uh, you are leading finish and say, what? So what um what was the what was the visibility like during that race? Uh Oreo. How do you feel? It looked like you were probably the, dodging a lot of people. The sp the spring I couldn't see properly the structures. I was almost blending like That is incredible. Well, uh, congratulations, good racing. I know you you were basically in right behind Connor Riznik for so much of that race. Uh, but did that did that impact like your frames, your visibility? Like how was it? You you were right on him and almost passed a couple times. No, was well, was good. Was good. In that point, was good going just on the back of corner. I was all the, all the time with visibility. One time, I think I passed him during a second during the drift paradise, but he make open then he passed again and was clean, no drop, FPS, nice. That's great. Yeah, you two had a you two had a short battle uh, the second race of Icebreaker as well. That was pretty cool to watch. You, Saber, and Connor were all fairly close for a while, and I believe you ended up pulling away from that. Yeah, I, I, I was with a different boost timing with him, and then all the time was like uh, getting close, getting far, getting uh -huh. close, getting uh -huh. far. Yep, yep. Congrats! It was it was awesome to watch. I know it was a, there was a, a lot of things that happened during that race. Yeah, congrats. Yeah, congrats, Neil. Thanks for talking. Thanks for coming up. Thank you. Thank you.
right, it looks like I think we have uh, final point results. Let me uh, save these out and I can share them on stream. Looks like we have our... Oh, actually, let me just... Uh, I got to double check ties. Sorry, real fast. Uh, let's see. We only had one tie and it is it is correctly broken. So, all right, let's see. This Perfect. Is... All right, and I believe that is correct. So we've got uh, Shaq New in first place with 52 points. Uh, Connor Riznik in second place and the 49 points and Neojet in third place with 42. So very nice. Well done, guys. Well, great racing, everybody. So yeah, Shaq New uh, did end up defending the title in the end. Uh, Connor Riznik was basically in striking distance of the first, but yeah. Um, Shaq New with that you know, last last couple points. Yeah, congratulations, Shaq New. And then uh, Connor Riznik, great racing. Um, let's see, and I think we had a lot of racers got points in most of, in many of the races, but yeah, we didn't have anybody get uh, get points in every single race. Yeah, great job, everybody. So Shaq New takes home the uh, RSA uh, Zeus Mark II ES. So that is still in concept, but it'll be CAG says it's coming next year. Uh, Connor Riznik takes home an RSI Lynx Rover. Uh, and Neojet takes home an Aurora LX. Congrats again, everybody. Yeah. Congrats. Great racing, everybody. Um, this was a lot of fun to put together. It was great seeing so many racers out there and so many good battles. Uh, I look forward to sort of seeing the, the footage and everything comes out of it. And thank you so much, everybody, for sticking around through some of the delays we had. Um, but this was, this was a lot of fun to race and put together. We appreciate your patience, everybody. Thank you. Yes, uh, any last words, Kistar? No, I think this was. I think this was great, despite the hiccups that we had and delays. I think we went back at it, and everybody got to get their racing itch scratched. And um, practice paid off for the individual to put in the time. Yeah, I think I was really excited to see so many people survive the early laps of the race. Uh, it looks like you know, especially Drifters Paradise, uh, actually. I think the turn you can see going on on stream right there is really tough when you have a lot of racers. So kudos to the racers for, you know, staying clean, surviving the laps. It's just great to see people battling later in the race. So yeah, great racing, everybody. And thank you for watching. Thank you for participating. And we'll catch you for the next one. And uh, for Aurora All-Stars 2954. So the other format, Aurora All-Stars, it'll take place around a planet. We did Crusader last year. We did Microtech this year. So who knows what planet will set all the tracks around for next year. So yeah, 07. And thank